I'll be reading Prisoner B3087 on Chapter 25. Buchenwald Concentration Camp, 1945. And Chapter 25 starts on page 204. Chapter 25. Buchenwald Concentration Camp. Just the looks on the faces of the prisoners already told me all already there told me all I needed to know. They were scared, wide-eyed, and not just at roll call or when a capo passed by. It was all the time, like any at any moment death might come for you. And at Buchenwald, as I was to learn, death came in many geezes. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it, but G-U-I-S-E-S. -S. I'm going to say geezes because I don't know for sure. After our first roll call, I was assigned to the stone quarry. Instead of breaking rocks, I was told to carry them up a long hill. I had to carry the big rocks on my back with my arms behind me to hold them in place. If you took a stone too large, you would drop it and the Nazis would shoot you. If you took a stone too small, the Nazis would shoot you for being lazy. Picking up the right size stone became a kind of competition among us. Another fine joke from the Nazis. Some of the prisoners pulled carts instead of carrying the stones on their backs. But that wasn't a job you wanted either. The Jews were chained to the carts like a team of drawed horses and whipped like animals. Only these animals were also required to sing. The Germans called them their singing horses. They had to carry a tune as they hauled enormous loads of rocks up the hill. I had already been part of the prisoner chorus at Sachsenhausen. I was grateful I didn't have to do it strapped to a horse cart there. Here. It was... I. It was only at our second roll call of the day that I saw the Buchenwald Zoo. I had seen the fencing area at the first roll call, but not the animals. There were deer, monkeys, even bears, bears, right there in the concentration camp. The zoo, I learned, was the idea of the camp's commandant. Carl Koch and his wife, Alsi, the commandant, had built it so his guards and their families would have something to entertain them. We starving prisoners stood at attention with our hunched shoulders and gaunt faces and oversized filthy clothes, while healthy, well-fed children and their mothers came to see the animals. The little girls wore pretty dresses and shiny black shoes and ribbons in their hair. The little boys wore shorts and jackets and caps, just as I used to. Sometimes they sucked on lollipops, watching us the way they watched the animals. What were they thinking, those little German children? Did they see animals when they looked at us, or people? I wasn't so sure myself anymore. The bears in the zoo were fed better than the prisoners at roll call. We'd watch a big bloody steaks were fed to the bears. I was so hungry I would have fought one of the bears for that meat and eaten it raw steak and bear. One day the Nazi gave us gave two prisoners the chance. They dropped a piece of raw meat in the, mid, in the mud between two men and to, told them to fight for it. And they did. The SS officers laughed at them and hit them with clubs while the Jew... Jews scrambled in the mud for the dinner. The animals in the zoo were never treated that so badly. The camp's commandment was a brutal man, but his wife was worse. Prisoners called her the Witch of Buchenwald and the Beast of Buchenwald. As with Amon Goeth years before, years, I did my best to stay away from both her and Frau Koch. One day at roll call, the Witch of Buchenwald walked up and down the rows of prisoners with one of the SS guards. She came to me. Check the number tattooed on my arm to move to the next prisoner. She read the number tattooed on his arm and checked it against a list on a clipboard. The soldier carried, You, she said to the prisoner. I am told you have another tattoo. The prisoner nodded nervously. Show it to me, Elsie Coach said. The man pulled up his sleeve up his, up his thin, bony arms to show her a faded tattoo of a crescent moon. Yes, the witch said. Very nice. Mark him down, she told the soldier. He made a note on his clipboard. When they were gone, I heard the man beside me give a little whimper, like he was trying not to cry. What difference did it make that he had a tattoo? Why had it made the witch of Buchenwald single him out? He must have been asking himself the same questions. All that mattered was that he was on the witch's list. He had been noticed, and surviving meant never being noticed by the Nazis. After the roll call, I never saw the man with the other tattoo again. One day I was washing myself with a camp water pump part by my daily ritual, 
part of my daily ritual when I saw two SS officers lure a deer to the fence of their enclosure in the zoo. It was a sleek animal with tall, broad antlers, while it nibbled at the food of them offered. The other officer tied its antlers to the fence with a leather strap. The buckling discovered that it was caught when it tried to pull away. It snorted and stamped and whipped its head back and forth, trying to pull itself free, but it was trapped. The SS officers laughed at and taunted it and let it and left it tied to the fence. I had seen the Nazis do terrible, terrible things, inhumane, unimaginably cruel things, and I had started to become numb. But somehow, seeing that deer there thrashing around, trying to free itself from the fence, made my blood boil. I wanted to run over and untie it and set it th free, to set it free, but I couldn't. There were too many other German soldier soldiers around. If they saw me near the zoo, I'd be caught. So I turned my back on him. I left the buck tied to the fence. As much as I wanted to help him, I had to look out for myself. I roll call that night the two SS officers who had tied up the deer were pulled off duty by commandment. Word of what they had done had gotten back to coach, and he berated them in German. Their zoo privileges were taken away, and they were not allowed to watch films in the camp movie theater for three months. Cruelty to prisoners the Nazis could abide, but not cruelty to animals. At roll call, a few days later, they told us we were being moved again. Gross R Rosen needed workers, and there were no new shipments of prisoners coming in from the countryside. The prisoners in the camps would be reassigned from now on as each camp needed workers. The Nazis had killed so many of us, they were running out of Jews. If you want to hear... Chapter 26, look for my next video.